The only thing that gives life and power to our teaching, to our preaching, is the gospel, is the blood of Jesus Christ. No one on earth knows the awesome power of Jesus Christ. It is the blood that makes the word alive. It is the blood that terrorizes Satan and every demon in hell. It is the blood that sets the captive free. It is the blood that guarantees my salvation. It is the blood that paid for your healing and your healing and your healing. We are not saved by church membership. Church membership is good, but it doesn't save you. We're not saved by water baptism. You can go down in the water a dry sinner and come up a wet sinner. You're not saved by joining a fraternal order and do good works. You are not saved by morality. You're not saved by religion. You can have a cross around your neck without Jesus in your heart. Religion and righteousness are two different things. You hear politicians say, I'm a man of faith. Faith in who? About what? Faith in God is one thing. Faith in socialism is poison to this nation. If you dare reject the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross, you invite the wrath of God upon you, upon your children, and upon your future generations. John 3.36 writes, He that believeth on the Son... Jesus Christ has everlasting life, but he that believeth not, listen, the wrath of God abides on him. The wrath of God abides on him. That's not my opinion, that's God's opinion. The Bible says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, for it is the blood that makes the atonement for the soul. Physically, our bones are stationary, our muscles are stationary, our tendons are stationary. The only moving part of your anatomy is the blood in your veins. It circulates through the body every 23 seconds, carrying oxygen, nutrients, and cleansing. The point is, when the blood stops moving in your body, you're dead. Totally and instantly. Therefore, a bloodless theology is a dead theology. A bloodless church is a dead church. America's churches are being flooded with what I call hot tub Christianity that makes you feel good about yourself without being good. Adjust to your sin is the message. It's not necessary to confess your sin. Let us hook you up with a counselor. And she'll explain or he'll explain just why you are like you are. Let me explain something for you. The only person that can remove the sin problem from your life is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. What is the symbolism of the Holy Communion? It is symbolically a blood transfusion from the throne of God. Jesus said to his disciples... This is my blood of the New Testament. Drink ye all of it. We say that every time we have communion. Why? Because Adam's blood was poisoned with sin. Remember, the life is in the blood. Adam died from blood poisoning. So strong that 6,000 years later, the virus of sin thrives in the bloodstream of every carnal man. To those of us who have accepted Christ, when we lift the communion cup to our lips, we symbolically take in the supernatural, life-changing power of Jesus Christ that drives out the virus of sin, sickness, and disease. 1 Corinthians 10, 16 says, The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Jesus Christ? The point is, when you take the Holy Communion, Satan sobs. I've lost him. I've lost her. Look, they're covered now by the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood prevents a shield around you that cannot be penetrated by the Prince of Darkness. (laughs) 
Diseases are conquered. You have diseases in your bloodstream probably right now. Communion taken worthily sends disease cells running for cover. Disease cells are driven out by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. My mother at the age of 90 took a cab to church, took a cab because they would no longer let her drive. I said, why are you going to church just for communion? She said, because communion releases the power of God to heal my body. Communion cleanses me from all sin. Communion brings to me a supernatural protection that nothing else on this planet will give. That is all Bible true. Communion taken unworthily will send you to your grave. You are mocking the blood of Christ. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty nine, He that eateth or drinketh the communion unworthily eats and drinks damnation to himself. Blood speaks to God. Blood makes an audible sound in the ear of God. The Bible says to the blood of Jesus that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. The blood of your brother cries out to me from the ground. God said that. What did it say? It said Cain is guilty, guilty, guilty. The result is that Cain was cursed for the rest of his life, as were his descendants. The fact is that the blood of 65 million American babies killed in America's abortion mills cry out to God for justice. Those lives are not forgotten, and they're not gone. America is guilty, guilty, guilty. We, the people, the United States of America is under a curse, and that curse will be released following the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ. Those 65 million babies are going to be accounted for by the hand of God. They are not forgotten. The blood of Jesus Christ demands our unity. I repeat, the blood circulates through your body every 23 seconds. The church of Jesus Christ is one body, and it is the blood that unifies the body. The last prayer that Jesus prayed on this earth, Father, I pray that they, the church, may be one, even as you and I are one. Let me tell you that denominations divide. For all of their good works, if they fought the devil as hard as they fought each other, we would have had world revival a long time ago. Doctrines divide. The blood unifies. Racial issues divide. The blood unifies. There is no white church. There is no black church. There is no brown church. There is only the blood-bought church of Jesus Christ. The blood testifies to our relationship with each other. When you receive the Holy Communion, you become related to every person in this church or in the world who lifts that cup and says, Jesus is Lord of my life. Ladies and gentlemen, if we could all get together, we could turn this country around overnight. Look at the scarlet stream of blood that flows through the sacred scripture. The stream begins at the gates of Genesis, and it flows all the way through the holy text. It begins with Cain and Abel in Hebrews 11:4, saying that by faith Abel offered a, an acceptable sacrifice. It was a lamb because it pleased God because that's what God required. That was the will of God. Listen to me. You can never go wrong doing the will of God. And the will of God and the word of God are always the same. People say, I would like to know the will of God. Here it is. Joseph, with his coat of many colors, was sold into slavery in Egypt, and he was sent to prison because he was falsely accused of rape. He became prime minister, and he brought his brothers and father, Jacob, to live in the rich lands of Goshen. Goshen in Egypt was the rich farming 
sector of the country. That family of 70 became a family of almost 2 million people, but they were slaves. How did they get set free? They got set free by the shedding of blood. The blood of a spotless lamb sprinkled over the door, on the sides of the door, on the trough that was at the foot of the door. It's called the Passover. The house was sealed by the blood of a spotless male lamb that had been tied to their door for three days so that they could get to know that lamb. And it just wasn't someone's lamb. It was their lamb. God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. The blood is your protection. The blood will never lose its power. The blood is our Passover. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing, 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 nothing but the blood of Jesus. Give the Lord praise in the house. In the Old Testament, the first covenant, virtually everything was necessary. Every divine right was necessarily required blood for the consecration of a house, for the consecration of a priest, for the birth of a child, for the repentance of sin, for the festivals, the blood covenant in contracts. Most of the furniture in the temple was consecrated by blood. Each rite demanded a sacrificial lamb with these qualifications. A young male lamb, spotless, without blemish, that was checked by the high priest. So how does the New Testament begin? Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. He was and he is the spotless male lamb without blemish pure, holy, destined to die. He was our scapegoat. When he died, my sins were gone and your sins were gone, never to be remembered, buried in the deepest sea. Hallelujah for the blood of Jesus Christ. With the new year upon us, it's time to unlock the power of biblical fasting and transform your life. Do not be content going through this new year carrying the same burdens from your past. God has much more in store for your life and the lives of your loved ones. For your generous gift of any amount, we will send you the Unlocking the Power of Fasting devotional by Pastor Matt and a vial of anointing oil. For your gift of $150 or more in support of the ministry, you'll also receive the Unlocking the Power of Fasting journal, the Facts of Fasting sermon, and a Daily Truth perpetual calendar. You can experience a deeper, more powerful relationship with God that can only come through prayer and fasting. Send your best gift today. Call the number on your screen or visit jhm.org fasting. At the Lord's Supper, the scarlet stream continues. Jesus said to his disciples sitting around the table, this cup is the New Testament in my blood that was shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Drink ye all of it. Drink ye all of it. At Calvary, the lamb was led to the slaughter. The scarlet stream of blood trickled from that cross through every book of the New Testament. That scarlet stream of blood continued rolling through the ages and dispensation, cleansing men of sin. Its crimson flow bathed my soul. It changed my life as a teenager and made me a new creature in Christ Jesus. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. No remission. The blood of the cross is special blood. The blood shed at the cross was the blood of God. The virgin born son of God conceived by the Holy Spirit to avoid the virus of Adam so that his blood was absolutely pure. This is a theological X spot in the history of men. Mary's blood was not in the veins of Jesus. Mary's blood came from Adam. It was toxic. 
God's blood was in Jesus so that when he went to the cross, his blood was pure blood that saved you and you and you and me. When Solomon dedicated the temple and he slaughtered 22,000 oxen, think about that, and 120,000 sheep, millions of dollars worth of livestock, the blood ran out of the temple in a stream that had been dug in the floor so that it could get outside. But it was not that blood. All of that blood could not redeem one person. When Solomon dedicated the temple, not the blood shed when Herod slew the babies two years of age and under, not the blood of helpless children snatched from the arms of their mother. Not the blood shed when Joseph's brothers took his coat of many colors and baptized it in goat's blood and deceived their father Jacob, saying, Joseph is dead. It was not that blood. Not the blood shed in the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 A.D. when Titus destroyed that city and one million Jewish people were slaughtered defending the temple. Not that blood. What blood? The only blood that can remove the stain of sin from your soul is the priceless blood of the Lamb of God, that blood. The blood that flows through Emmanuel's veins at the cross, that blood. The blood that cleanses from all unrighteousness, that blood. The blood that terrifies Satan and his legions, that blood. The blood that conquers every disease in the human body, that blood. The blood that sets the captive free from fear, from guilt, from condemnation. Thank you, Father, for the blood of Jesus Christ, the precious blood. Give him praise. Give him glory in this house. The blood of Christ is the only road to redemption. Now, why did I say that? Because there are lots of people, some of them pastors of churches, saying we're all on different roads going to the same place. Wrong. Wrong, wrong. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. That's God's law. That's not my law. You can't change that law. You can change your opinion, but you can't change anything else. There is no other way to forgiveness. One man says, is God's heart so hard that he will not show mercy when he sees me cry on the day of judgment that I may weep and prevail on God through my tears to forgive me? The answer is no. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Will God forgive me for being kind to the poor and for giving my money to feed orphans? The answer is no. The Bible answer is, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. If you give your body to be burned, God will reject the ashes because you're not worthy of the kingdom by what you do. It's what Jesus Christ has done for you that makes it possible for you to get to heaven. And then there comes the man that says, but if we give ourselves zealously to some fraternal order, will not God forgive us? No. He showed me his left hand. It had one of those fraternal rings that you often see. He said, what do you think of that? I said, is your other hand saved? <laughs> he was disappointed. The answer is, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. No means no, not maybe, no remission. Question four, if we observe the golden rule, will not God forgive us for our obeying the golden rule? The text is plain. There is no remission without the shedding of blood. Listen to me, the golden rule without Christ is the license to sin. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Without Christ in your heart, the golden rule is nonsense. What can wash away my sin, said with me? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing, nothing 
nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. In Exodus 12, we read that on the night of the death angel passing through Egypt, executing judgment upon the firstborn where there was no lamb's blood over the door. He kept the promises that he made to the children of Israel, and the blood shall be for you a token upon the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. The blood on the doorpost kept the death angel away from the houses of Israel again. It was the Passover, but had they put jewels on the side post and diamonds in the door, it would not have stopped the death angel. Had they put rubies that gleamed like flames for a doorknob, it would not have stopped the death angel. Had diamonds shone like miniature suns from every side of that port, it would not have stopped the death angel. Had silver and gold covered the front porch in layers, it would not have stopped the death angel. What would stop the death angel? One drop of lamb's blood. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Have you placed the blood of Christ on the doorpost of your soul? No? Then you're lost. You're defenseless against Satan and demon powers. You're controlled by the curse of sin. You are one heartbeat from the gates of hell. I can't say that any cleaner than that. His blood puts all men on the same level. What mountains of pride and conceit are brought low. The fact that there is not remission of sin without the shedding of blood makes all people equal before God. It puts the slave eating rabbits in the jungle with the millionaire eating canvas back duck in the Waldorf Astoria in New York. No matter how rich, how educated, how honored, how celebrated, how powerful you may think you are, you will not get into heaven without the blood of the cross covering your soul. The blood is eternal. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin in this world or the world to come. You're saying, Pastor, why are you preaching like this? Let me answer with the words of the prophet Elijah. Ezekiel 3, 18 and 19 says, When I say to the wicked, Elijah the speaker, you shall surely die, speaking of their sin, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked ways to save his life, that same wicked person shall die in their iniquity, but his blood will I require at your hands. You hear that last phrase? That means when I get in this pulpit, Pastor Matt gets in this pulpit, and we preach a sermon that is less than true, the blood of the people that hear that sermon is on our head when we face God. That's why I'm not afraid of you, but I am terrified of a God who has all power to destroy me. If I fail to warn you, Elijah continues, but if you warn the wicked and he does not turn from his wickedness nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But you are innocent because you have delivered your soul. The point, if I fail to warn you, your blood is on my hands. If I warn you and you reject the Lord, it's on you. And how is it with you? Look deeply into your own soul. As we stand together as a congregation, those of you who are watching by television, don't turn that television off. and say, Pastor, I have not accepted the blood redemption from the cross of Christ. The price that Christ has paid for the redemption of my soul. I have not received him as Savior and Lord. And today I want to do that. 
If that describes you, slip your hand up right now. Raise your hand. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you. Those of you who are watching by television, I want to have this prayer with you. Extend your hand toward the screen. Congregation, repeat the prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me by the blood of Jesus Christ. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Now today, now today, I choose to serve the Lord Jesus. I choose to serve the Lord Jesus. As Savior and Lord. As Savior and Lord. Amen. You're now a child of God. I want to invite you to join us for live worship services each Sunday at 8.30 and 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, also at 6.30. Join us for worship and a gospel message from Cornerstone Church each week. You can watch by going online to jhm.org slash watch. Now stay tuned. Pastor Hagee is bringing a blessing. Hagee Ministries continues to proclaim the truth of God's Word around the globe. Together, we are providing humanitarian aid across Israel, community service initiatives at home and abroad, and transforming the lives of young mothers at the Sanctuary of Hope. Your partnership today ensures we reach the generations of tomorrow through many of today's social media platforms and live web streaming. Become a legacy partner today. Call the number on your screen or go to jhm.org partner. Here at Hagee Ministries, we're excited to announce our digital web platforms that provide you with live streaming services, special messages, and series, all through our video on-demand applications. Our Hagee Ministries channel app is now available on Apple TV, Amazon, and Roku streaming platforms. You can also watch our services live on your favorite social media channels, including YouTube, Facebook, or online at jhm.org watch. You've been watching Hagee Ministries. And now, your blessing with Pastor John Hagee. And now, may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you, giving you His peace. May you live with great joy, knowing that you are God's child, living in a dimension where grace has been given and the abundance of heaven has been received. May you see the blessings of God is bringing through the answered prayer in this new year. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Then watch as the windows of heaven pour out untold blessings as you pursue the purposes of God for your life. Our God is a good God, and He wants you to be blessed in every area of your life. In the authority of Jesus' name, receive this blessing. Amen and amen.